Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Anyhow, um, today is my first day along with my kids. It's been almost two weeks or has it been two weeks? Today is May 3rd. I got my surgery on the 2nd, but whatever. I don't know. It's been almost two weeks. I think Friday it'll be two weeks. So yeah. Um, since I had surgery, Gary went back to work today. Um, so yeah, already I'm finding a challenge. I cannot put my youngest daughter down for her nap because she likes to fondle my chest and my armpit area right here. She likes to play with this. And I normally would lay her here and put her to sleep, but she can't lay here, of course, for obvious reasons. And she just won't go to sleep unless she like laying on me. So that is already a challenge. Um, I don't have much to do today. I'm trying to take it easy as much as possible. Yesterday, I went and got my nails done and my toes done. This is my Mother's Day look. I don't know what I'm wearing, but I just wanted to do glitter because I thought it was cute. It was at one point in time I used to wear this all the time because I used to love it. But yeah. Anyhow, um, I'm going to try to vlog my day today. I know I say this all the time, but I am not accustomed to just picking up the camera when I start doing something. I'm just automatically doing it because that's what I'm normally doing. And I just don't think about it. And then when I finally think about it, it's like way past too late. So if this ends up being an intro for another day, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like tomorrow, I'm actually doing something, so I plan on vlogging tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is my first post op appointment since surgery, so I'm gonna try to vlog that and um, I'm gonna try to sneak the camera in there so they want to see and then just like record. So, I'll see how that goes. Um, I also have to update y'all on what happened in the last week or so, so I'll probably be putting all of that into this one video. So, make sure y'all stay tuned. I'm gonna try and vlog my day if I can remember. If not, y'all know what it is when y'all see the next clip. <laughs> so yeah, stay with me and I'll see y'all in the next clip. <laughs> Bye. Hey y'all, so like I told y'all, I knew that I wasn't gonna vlog yesterday cause it was a lot going on when he went to work and I was there by myself. So I'm headed to my post-op appointment. I will try and record, but I'll give y'all an update once I leave. Um, I'm about five minutes away from there, so um, yeah, that's it. I'll give y'all an update when I leave on everything, so yeah, stay tuned. Hey, y'all. So, it is the next day, as y'all can see. Excuse my hair. I got a hair appointment on saturday so right now i'm just working the two braids period but um um this is an update um i am currently home along with the kids gary went back to work yesterday so actually not yesterday the day before yesterday so um it is just me now with the kids but um this is an update I'm going to insert some um, photos of what I'm looking like now because I have my, you know, garnet garment on. But I had an infection, y'all. So let's just start off with that. Um, I'm just going to give y'all a rundown of how I caught it and, you know, stuff like that. So um, I would say this was like day four five or six no maybe like it was like after a week i'll say it was sunday to be exact yep it was um day eight it was day eight 
It started day seven though. Um, so I had the stereo. So I had this itch attack. Like it was itching so bad at the bottom of my um, left breast. My left is slightly bigger than the right. Like really, really slightly. Y'all can't tell. Only I can tell because it's my breast. But you can't tell like in clothes or anything like that. Um, it was itching really, really bad. Like I was going crazy scratching, but not the scar itself. I was itching, um, up and above and under the scar. Here come my daughter. Go back in the front, man. So, um, after that, the stereo strip has started to come off. And so, um, go to the front, go back to the front. No, go to the front. Um, the stereo strip has started to come off or whatever. So anyhow, um, I ended up wiping under there or something. I think it was after my shower. I was, or during the shower, I was washing the area and I ended up seeing like some yellowish looking. So I'm like, oh, what is that? So I asked my fiance to look, he looked and he was like, okay, yeah, it looked like it's a little something going on. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to put some ointment on there and I'm going to chill out because I had been like kind of moving around a little more and I like not doing that. I lifting nothing heavy or nothing, just kind of moving around a little bit. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to just chill out for a minute. The next day I go to get in the shower and I check, no, that day he put a bandaid over it, um, over that same area. Cause you know, it was a little, you know, you could see this, you could see like the pink flesh of my skin or the white part of my skin. You know how to get that, the second layer of your skin basically. And so we didn't know if it was a hole there or if it was just my skin. We didn't really know what it was. So anyways, um, he put a bandaid over it. And put some ointment, he put some neosporin on there and then put a band-aid over it. So the next day, I get in the shower every night. So I was about to get in the shower and I'm like, I took the band-aid off and it was some green and yellow discharge on there. And I actually kept the band-aid. I wish I would have took a picture of it, but I just showed it to the doctor. I kept it to show it to the doctor and I discarded it there. But um, um, I'm like, okay, now this ain't normal. I know anytime there's green involved, it's an infection. So I immediately was like, okay, we need to go to the doctor, the hospital, because, you know, this ain't good and I'd rather be safe than sorry. And he was like, okay. So he started gathering the girls together and I just was like, let me just call first before I just go up there. So I called and I let them know what was going on. So they was like, okay, we're going to have your surgeon call back. And I'm like, okay. Huh. Here, come Leah. She ain't going to the front because I can't tell her to go to the front because she ain't going to listen to me. Go to the front. She ain't listening. But anyway, so my surgeon ended up calling um, calling me back. And he was like, yeah, um, we're just going to start you on some more antibiotics. And I'm like, okay, some antibiotics that I've already been taking prior. So anyways, I want y'all to, if y'all had breast reduction surgery, comment down below and let me know after your breast reduction did the doctor... Uh, prescribe you some antibiotics so anyways um so he sent over the antibiotics or whatever and um it was late so i ended up getting them the next day as the day the next day came there was no more green it was just yellow and then days prior it was just anyways yellow so that wednesday that was sunday the next day it was yellow the next day it was yellow the next day it was yellow and um wednesday was my post-op appointment so i go to my post-op appointment and i'll insert a video of you know her saying whatever because i recorded it because y'all know me i need evidence anyway so i showed her and she was like, well, um, I don't know if it was quite an infection. While well, I was like, okay, well, I had a Band-Aid to show you that it was an infection. So anyway, she looked at, she was okay, yes, that was an infection. So she ended up telling me that during surgery, um, they found that I had cysts in both of my breasts. And I'm, okay, yeah, so I see the green yeah, there. So that is infection. Yeah. yeah, most likely, yes. So I remember your surgery. You had some um, some cysts in your breasts. Really? really? Yes. And that's not unusual. It happens to some people. Mm -hmm. um, those cysts sometimes contain nasty fluid. That's the best word I can come up with, really. So we were concerned that if we don't put you on antibiotics, you would develop an infection because a lot of those cyst ruptures, we were cutting out the tissue. Really? Why, so why wasn't I told this after surgery? Oh, <laughs> no one told me. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you're probably very out of it. So okay. it's easier to discuss it on your first post-op to let you know. Okay. And it's not out of the ordinary. We see those cysts, especially in women of African American descent. Mm -hmm. A lot of women tend to have those cysts in their breasts. Okay. So um, 
that's why we had these. We normally don't put people in a virus after oh. their production. Oh, okay. But in your case, we thought, let's be safe, let's put it on the just to be sure. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like I took the right steps. You was in there? I was, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so is it okay to take this off? You can, yeah. Now, I would wait three weeks to okay. see if it falls off. That's the only one left. Everything yeah. else is gone. So. Everything else is gone. Yeah, yeah just see. Um, by okay. three weeks, it hasn't come off. You can just still on that way. Your breast tissue came back normal, so that's been unusual, even though there were like nobody informed me of that and she was like oh well you know we normally you know can't talk to you after surgery because you're drugged up so you know we fought we normally follow up at post-op and i think that is stupid because you caught my you caught my emergency contact which was my fiance you caught him to let him know that i was out of surgery and i did good i think that that is the time for you to tell him that okay she has cysts in her breast and make sure she continues to take her vitamins and I, and I, it's the reason why i say this because me i don't take pills originally i don't have a, a prescription that i have to take daily unless i was pregnant and i barely keep up with my prenatals or my um or birth control and i that's why i got off birth control because i know i ain't gonna keep up with the pills um but i once so after about three days i stopped taking all pills i didn't i didn't know these were um antibiotics i mean i kind of did but at the same time i'm like okay i'm good i don't feel no infection and that's when it came right after i stopped taking them honestly but um i'm like okay i feel fine you know i don't i don't like taking because i was on uh oxycodone and um tylenol and ibuprofen you know like fluctuating between the three and the oxycodone was way too strong so i stopped taking that and then, like, I just don't like swallowing pills. Ibuprofen about bigger than my face. And so is the um, Tylenol. So I'm just, like, I'm straight on pills. I, it wasn't, my pain level wasn't so bad to the point where I needed to continue to take the pills. So, like I said, I stopped all pills. Now, had y'all would have called or informed my my emergency contact, which is my fiance, that they had found cysts in my breast and that I need to continue on antibiotics, then I would have continued taking it. But anyways, back to what she said. She was like, um, you had cysts in your breast and she's like, we normally do not prescribe patients antibiotics after surgery unless there's a problem. But when we seen that you had cysts in your breast, we thought it would be, um, you know, just more safer to prescribe you some you over there stuck, ain't you? Let's prescribe you some antibiotics. And so, yeah, basically that. But it's like, um, just pay attention to that. Make sure, you know, if if your doctor or the place where you're having surgery, hold if your doctor or the place where you're having surgery isn't um, kind of informing you on everything, make sure you call. Make sure you ask those questions. Because like I tell y'all, I'm going to give y'all the raw, uncut, everything you need to know. Um, So make sure you just, you know, ask. After your surgery, when you're feeling coherent, call up to your um, surgeon's office and ask, like, you know, how did everything go? Did I have any cysts? Did I have any, any complications? Anything? Um, They said that there were no, you know, anything else, nothing else found in my breast tissue, like, you know, cancer or anything like that. Thank God. But, um, yeah, just make sure y'all keep updated to that. Um, as of today, I no longer have like the greenish color and I don't have the yellow either. Um, it's just, um, blood really. And I just like, um, it's just going to look like probably a little terrible when it heals completely. Cause like I got a little scar above the actual incision and it's like a little illy to me, but other than that it's doing good. Um, my stereo strips finally came off. Um, my breasts look nice. They look really nice. The scars look like scars as far as pain. Um, they prescribed me this Gapitin, um, Gapitin, yeah, Gapitin medicine. It's for like nerve tissue, nerve pain. So like you get like shooting pains in your nerves. So that's what I've been taking in my Cephalexin, which is an antibiotic. Those are the only two things I've been taking. I haven't took in any pain medicine in about a good four or five days. I haven't taken any. Um, probably longer than that actually um my scars hurt 
um she told me that it's okay now to lift my arms and right now i am uh 11 uh 13 days post-op tomorrow will make 14 so tomorrow will make two weeks um yeah yeah tomorrow will make two weeks um she told me that i can lift stretch my arms out now i don't really do it much because my scars kind of still hurt so i don't really try to stretch them too much she told me that i can lay on my sides now that that is okay um low oh yeah my scars so that is the only thing that really hurts like at this moment that i feel like a little bit of pain in and not constantly it just feels like you cut yourself and you know you feel that pain that's the kind of pain i feel um nothing too major uh it was something else that i wanted to uh say to you oh i still can only feel out of one nipple so the left side is the only side that give me problems that's the side that had the, the little small infection i can't feel my nipple over here um this the one that's a little bit bigger than the uh, right but what's crazy is i feel no pain over here like even the little scar i don't even feel that all of that all that area down at the bottom is still completely numb so I can't feel it. This breast, I can feel everything. I can feel every part of it, the nipple. I feel the whole breast. So this is the side that I feel the most pain on. So I feel stuff. So by this one being numb, I don't really feel much, which is probably a good thing. Um, so they say that, yeah, it's a po they told me this prior to surgery, that it's a possibility that you would not get your feeling back in your nipple. So keep that in mind when um, having a breast reduction surgery. Um, other than that, the infection ain't stopping nothing. It still looks great. I'll be, show y'all the top a little bit. Of course, I can't expect this. This, um, is terrible. She said that these bras are terrible, which they are. I hate it. Um, she told me to keep it on, um, more than I was. Cause I sure wasn't wearing it. Honestly, I'll be walking around with no bra, nothing. Um, but she says, so just in case any fluids get built up in there, this is what help compresses it. So I've been trying to keep this on. I've had my appointment was yesterday, yesterday in the morning. Yeah. So I went, um, yesterday. So it's been about 24 hours. I had put this on, um, I had on a regular bra. I had on a sports bra yesterday. She told me that it's okay for me to wear those now. I had on a sports bra yesterday, and then when I got in the shower last night, I put this on, and I've had it on all morning. I took it off one time to change my gauze down here, but other than that, um, yeah, I haven't put it on. So she also gave me, like, these little, um, it's like an antibacterial little strip, and she's prescribed me some antibi an antibacterial cream. So she told me to put the cream on, the strip, and then, like, a gauze to hold it. She told me I didn't need anything for this side. I didn't need a gauze pad or anything for the for the incisions area and i got dissolvable stitches um i actually thought that i had um other kind of stitches so i thought that they was going to be um removing those yesterday so i was a little nervous about that but i have a dissolvable stitches which is good too so um honestly y'all my breasts look great i'm not really happy about that little scar under there because i am i once before my um surgery i googled so many breast infections i google everything um that's another thing too um your fish yeah your infection can get as bad to whereas you having fevers um chills your breast be like warm and it's um, like super red or discolored or all of these things i didn't have none of those symptoms literally the only thing i didn't let it get that far like it literally all happened like one day and i was already immediately calling up to my um doctor so make sure y'all catch it before it gets any worse than it possibly is um yeah other than that um that's that's really it y'all if y'all got any uh questions about anything else y'all can comment down below and i'll answer them for you overall i'm feeling great um it's a little challenging to do certain things now that he's back at work like putting my daughter to sleep my baby the one that y'all just saw she likes to lay on my chest when she go to sleep and she likes to play with my chest or play with my underarm weird jump. but i can't let her do that because of you know my surgery or whatever so it's a little bit challenging putting her back to sleep every day but other than that um this is kind of back to normal there she go let's squeeze her hair she getting a shampoo today what is that oh letters but y'all other than that i'm feeling okay I'm
if y'all got any questions though comment below i'm giving y'all the real raw things that people never talk about being things that people forget to tell you guys and stuff like that so make sure y'all comment down below if it's anything else that i did not answer and that y'all want to see and uh yeah here go to